And this is a Hantec 2D42 oscilloscope and waveform generator. And on this video, we're going to be taking a look at its accessories and its features. And as always, I'd like to remind you that I place a link in the description down below to this unit in case you'd like to get one for yourself. First off, we get a set of test leads and they do have a protective cap on the front, which can be handy to reduce the length of this, especially working with higher voltages. And because this is a two channel scope, they have included two VNC to alligator clips test leads. We also get an additional set of test leads with replaceable ends. So as you can see, we can swap the ends out depending on what we're trying to do with them. And we can swap them between those banana style, this guy's right here, and also the alligator clips or this little ring style terminals. We also get two test probes and these guys are rated at 80 megahertz and each one of those probes comes with this little customizable rings for identification. And we get a wall adapter and a USB-A to USB-C cable to recharge the scope. But before I get started with the oscilloscope, I do want to point out that the carrying case is of the semi-rigid type, which is always a good thing for protection. And the body of the oscilloscope is hard plastic. However, the outer portion is rubberized in something that almost feels like if it was a case, which is going to be good for drop protection. On the back of the oscilloscope, there is a stand that allows it to tilt up to a maximum of 45 degrees. And in an interesting design choice, two of the buttons are backlit while the rest of them are just normal. However, they do have a nice tactile feel to them. On the side of the unit, we have a dust cover and underneath that dust cover, there is a USB-C port to charge the oscilloscope and also to connect it to the computer to use with the software or to transfer data. And finally, on the top of the unit, we have the VNC connectors for both of the channels and the generator. And to use the oscilloscope, we get four main buttons. The first one takes us to the oscilloscope. The second one takes us to the multimeter function. The third one takes us to the waveform generator. And finally, the last one allows us to access the settings. What's also interesting is that the buttons on the top represent the section of the screen that they're under. So for example, if I press that first one, it allows us to switch the language. And this last one that says one out of five, that means that there is five additional pages of things that we can look through. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get this thing down, you're able to navigate the scope fairly easy. The scope also features an auto setting that allows it to adjust the settings so it can display a steady waveform for you in case you're new to oscilloscopes or in case you just wanted to get a quick reading. We can also freeze the information that is shown on the screen with this green button, essentially pausing that waveform and resume that by tapping that one more time. Also notice that the buttons on the top bring up a menu and this allows us to enable or disable either channel one or channel two and we can also change the coupling between AC, DC, or ground. Also notice that we're on page one of two, so let's go to the second page. Here we can change the probe all the way from 1x to 1000x. We can turn on or off the bandwidth limiter, and we can also turn on and off the invert function in case we wanted to invert that wave. And this button allows us to adjust the trigger. Notice that we can select the source, channel one, channel two. We can also select whether we want that slope to be rising, falling or double and also change the mode from auto normal or single on the second page we can enable force trigger on or off and this channel button does the same function as the top it just brings up the channel settings and the second button allows us to adjust the time settings the arrow keys have multiple functions notice on their trigger we are able to adjust that trigger we can bring that up and down in case we wanted to tweak that on the channel function bringing this up or down moves that position of that waveform and in the time function the up and down arrows adjust the time divisions and the side to side arrows adjust the horizontal position of the trigger we can also use this button right here by long pressing it to save custom settings for the current display or return them to the default ones. And if we wanted to save the actual waveform, we can go into menu and then we can go into the save function and then we get a total of six positions for us to save data into or recall from. And I do wanna show you the rest of those menu options, which includes adjusting the screen brightness. I run mine at max, adjusting whether the screen stays on all the time or turns off after a period of time. And we can also turn on the measure function 
And for the measure function, there is actually six pages of different things that we can potentially measure with this oscilloscope. But I do wanna point out that while there are many different parameters that we can measure, we can only select up to four at the same time. I'm gonna turn that one on, that one on. Let's try this one, this one and notice that we have four. If I try to enable another one, it won't let me. So I have to deselect another one that I might not need. And now I can enable another one for again, a maximum or total of four on the screen at the same time. But what's also interesting is that if you have used any of these buttons, which affects what the arrow functions do, they do something interesting. For example, if I have just used the trigger, we know that this can move the trigger up and down. You see that number. However, even after I deselect that, it continues to adjust the trigger if I press up or down. And normally these arrows are used by default to move the waveform or adjust the voltage. So to get that function back, I have to press the menu option. And now notice that the arrows do allow me to move that waveform either up or down or pressing that button either left to right, adjust the voltage divisions. So again, you'll find the same thing happens when you use the other ones. If you use the time and you were adjusting the time on there, even after the time function disappears, this continues to adjust the time until you exit out of that function by pressing the menu button. Well, let's go back into that menu option and I'm gonna go into the next page by pressing F4 one more time. And I wanna show you this function, which is called cursor. I'm gonna tap F1 and I'm gonna enable the cursor. And what you'll find is that there's two faint lines that come up, one in the bottom, one on the top, in this case, measuring volts. And if I go to the next page, I can see where they're at, cursor one and cursor two and the increment. Let's move cursor one and you'll see that top line move. And to move the second one, I can press F2. And again, I can use the arrows to move up and down that line as desired. But now let's look at the other type of cursor. I'm gonna go back to the first page. I'm gonna change from volt to time. And you can see two very faint lines now in the horizontal direction. And it's gonna work the same way. I'm gonna go to page number two and I can select cursor number one to move one of those lines. You can see how that line is moving. And then if I select cursor number two, I can move the other line as well. Now the lines are not the easiest to see from far, but they are visible. And I think that's just one of the things that you have to get used to as far as owning a small portable oscilloscope. Another helpful function that is also found under the menu option is gonna be on the second page. And that is gonna be reference waveform, where we can save a reference waveform and we get two positions to save it, position A or position B. Now this is different than the save data option and I'm gonna save one into position A by hitting save. That is gonna save the current waveform. Now I'm gonna move this waveform around just so we can see what that looks like when we enable the saved waveform or reference waveform. I'm gonna go back into that menu, I'm gonna go reference, enable as you can see now we have the save waveform in a slightly different color so we can compare it to whatever else we have on the screen and in case you're curious about pro compensation on how that's adjusted i'll show you that towards the end of the video but now let's move over to the digital multimeter function i'm going to tap that right here and what you'll see is that you can navigate with the arrows or again using the buttons on the top right now we're on dc volts however i can use the arrows and now go to ohms. But notice I can do that same movement by just pressing the button on the top right below the icon. For example, the third one is gonna be the continuity meter. Also notice that we have a graphic on the top that tells us where to place the leads on those positions correspond to these positions right here. And if I go to the next page, here we have DC amps. I'm gonna select that and notice how the graphic is telling us to move the leads again to those corresponding positions. We also have DC milliamps and we also have DC millivolts. Moving to the third page, we have AC voltage, AC amps, again, tell, that graphic telling us to move the leads and AC milliamps. And on the fourth page, we get diode measurement and also capacitance measurement. The voltmeter is auto ranging. Let's take a look at a DC reading. And in multimeter mode, this button also allows us to freeze the data that's shown on the screen. I'm gonna take a reading there. I'm gonna pause it with this. And now I can remove the leads and the meter is gonna hold that measurement. Now let's take a look at an AC reading. 
And here's some resistance readings using a decade box. And if you want to see each resistance result in detail, I have a dedicated video with the box. I'll put a link to that video in the description down below. Now it's important to point out that the results are affected by normal factors like the length of the test leads, the accuracy of the resistance box, and the accuracy of the handtech, etc. And let's take a look at a diode. And for continuity, well now let's take a look at the signal generator function which is accessed with this button right here. And there's a couple different waveforms that we can create. Right now we have the square one, we can do a ramp, sine wave, trapezoid, and we get one, two, three, four arbitrary ones. Now the arbitrary ones can actually be customized using the software in case you wanted to download those in here, you have up to four positions to store four potential arbitrary waveforms. And the signal from the generator comes out from the third BNC connector on the oscilloscope and it's represented graphically on the screen. You can see right now that it's currently not outputted anything. And if I wanted to begin that output, I can tap this button. Notice how that turns green and this turns green, indicating that it is currently outputting the signal. We can also customize the signal. We can adjust the frequency, the amplitude. And if I go to the next page, the offset and the duty. And the adjustment can be done by selecting the item, in this case frequency, and then using the arrows either left to right or up or down, or my preferred way of doing it is tapping this one more time. It brings up this calculator style where we can enter the number that we want and then hit OK for us to accept that number. And we can also turn on the signal generator and the oscilloscope at the same time. Let's take a look at this arbitrary one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start over here. Now I'm gonna move over to the scope and right now the scope is connected to the signal generator and you can see right here that measurement of that arbitrary one signal. And the signal generator can also be used to adjust the probe compensation and that is done by setting the probe to 10x and connecting that probe to the generator output. Next, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna look for that square waveform. I'm gonna make sure I have 1K selected to V and then I can begin to generate that signal. Now I can go into the scope and using the included screwdriver, I can insert it into this orifice and turn it left to right to uh, compensate the probe and produce a nice square waveform. And speaking of the probes, they do have good strain relief. As you can see, this is gonna extend the life of the cable located here and strain relief right here on that grounding clip. And also the grounding clip does have a good amount of retention on here that allows it to turn, but also give me a good solid connection. Also included is this hook attachment and these two locating sleeves for the tip. Now these little sleeves or caps they don't really snap in and hold as well as the hook clip, but they do have some level of retention on there. And the software from Handtech does allow you to interface to the oscilloscope and it makes it easier to see because it's a larger screen. You get access to the signal generator, to also the digital multimeter, and you have full size controls. Additionally, there are a couple different features that I have found on the software that I have not found directly on the oscilloscope. So it does come in handy to have the oscilloscope connected to the computer so you can interface directly to it. Now the software does have a couple little strange bugs for example, sometimes it will freeze between me switching modes, between switching from oscilloscope to signal generator or multimeter, and I will have to restart the software or restart the oscilloscope to get a data again. It does have a very good or more than decent built-in instruction manual, which does walk you through its features. It's again, a big plus because it allows you to understand somewhat what they were trying to do when they created the software. And I think in between this manual and the electronic version of the manual that you can get for the oscilloscope, you can kind of find your way around the oscilloscope fairly quickly. What's also interesting is the USB-C cable that they include with the oscilloscope and that is because while it looks like a normal USB-C cable in terms of its function, the back portion of it is long, about an inch and a half long. And the reason for that is that the USB charging port is somewhere inside of the oscilloscope. So this allows us to find a spot and click on that better. Now, if you were to lose this cable, you could potentially use a standard USB-C port that doesn't have a long portion in the back, but finding the spot in there is a little bit trickier. Not impossible, but it is something that 
it's definitely a little bit trickier with a smaller connector. But what's neat about the fact that this is rechargeable is that it uses a standard 1860 cells, which means that they are replaceable, they are serviceable. We can pop the back open and swap those out from new ones if they ever wear out. Now this is something I increasingly see disappearing on electronics, the fact that we cannot get to the inside of them and replace a simple rechargeable battery. In here we do have that option, which I think is great. And Hantec also has this current probe available, which adds more capability to this oscilloscope. So I think this oscilloscope for its price point, the fact that it is portable, definitely packs a punch in terms of these features. So if you guys want to get your own oscilloscope or the probe, I'll put a link to that in the description down below. And if you guys have any other questions regarding this, also put them in the comments. If you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit the like button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more reviews coming up for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.